Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you so much for joining. I am so happy to welcome our guests today, Alan and Sandra, onto the program from Twin Flame Divine Fire Radio Program, which I had the uh, pleasure of being a guest on not too long ago. So how are you guys doing today? We're doing okay, pretty good. good. Yeah, good day. Kind of a weird start to the day, but I mean, it's beautiful. The weather's shaping up great. It's warming up nicely and it's not raining for once, so we're good. Yeah. Now, what part nice of the Nice boom and headache this morning. Oh, yeah, definitely me too. From the Schumann going nuts. Let me pull that image up because we were just oh. talking about that. It's, it's, we're going for a fourth pulse just today. And uh, it's, it's, I feel it. I feel the pressure. I feel the headache. And it's wild. It's, we're on a wild ride here. It's oh, man, are we ever. I mean, <laughs> Since the shoe started kicking up, I don't think, you know, it had never really been seen before until recently and recently well, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. at the most. And now it's just like, wow. Yeah. What's we, happening? We, we all keep an eye on Mr. MBB333. Matter of fact, I put his link in the bottom because I knew we'd bring him up. You guys are friends with uh, Michael and a uh, great guy. I'm mm -hmm. glad we got somebody keeping an eye on things. Uh, he's got a great website. That's how I look at the Schumann. Matter of fact, I go to his website and pull it up. He makes yeah. everything so easy. It's all you can get to everything because we watch the KP as well. And um, there's some day as well. Yeah. yeah. Sunspot yeah. forming just out of nowhere. And, you know, I mean, there's yeah, a with, number. Hold on, I'm, I uh, I think you cut out for a second there. One second. Oh, yeah. oh there we go. The, the, tro the trolls are here, you know. There we go. I think you're in the one spot. It's great. Sorry, you turned into Darth Vader there for a second, but I think you're back. Let's see. Do we still have you here? Let me kill my camera and see if that helps. Gee, that does all the time. We get that constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that is a little bit better. Are we good? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Back, hey, <laughs> and you part of, know where you're going. Part part of living out in the in the uh, yeah. wilderness, right? Can you hear us? We're here. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh man, well, we're sorry. <laughs> we got to say this isn't unusual for us because we get to you the know what we foot can... piece of Ethernet to a router. <laughs> really low grid for anybody that is that doesn't follow doesn't know we live off the grid pretty so, much that's nice that's interesting do you use satellite for your internet <laughs> can you hear me Machine? i said do you use satellite for your internet no uh, xfinity i think we have an, we have an ethernet yeah. Ethernet is from our computer 100 feet away, direct link to the host. Um, I'm really sensitive to energies, and um, Wi Fi doesn't do really well on my body. Uh, I'm very, very super sensitive. sensitive to yeah. that. Any, any kind of like EMF or anything like that. Yeah, she'll, she'll need an electronic meter. I've got her. 
<laughs> yeah, I have uh, uh, my one of my uh, friends and viewers, Diane. She says she'll go into stores and mess up the charger, you know, the credit card machines, and the, they'll have all sorts of problems. Uh, uh -huh. And she got sh struck with lightning as a teenager, so it's like she kept some of that that juice in her or something. <laughs> oh Ooh, wow. wow, man! Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, we'll we uh, make quick trips into town, even more towers. And it's kind of like this thing where Alan will see a tower and he tries to hold back, hold back, hold back in case there's a light that's that's red. And to where we kind of don't have to sit right next to it, you know, because I, I don't notice it. But she she just like, you got to get out of here. You got to get out of here. And it's like in the middle of a bitty, a busy city, it's like I got nowhere to go. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've got <laughs> Go anywhere, deal, and you know we'll be out of here in maybe a minute. If I had a big roll of tin foil in the car, I could just wrap up <laughs> in tin foil, and I'd be. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. So <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, but very. <laughs> It, um, I've got a smart meter just behind the wall that's uh, in my office here. That you know is. You know, the, it was here when I moved here, but so yeah, you wouldn't dig that too much, probably. No, not smart meter. I know we did a little research. You know, we're not an expert on it or anything, but we know enough about them to know that we don't want anything to do with them, if, <laughs> exactly. if at all possible. Um, totally, I agree. We, we're very basic. We have a refrigerator. We have a um, a new wave instead of a microwave. They have new waves that circulate air. Um, we have a, um, a fryer that we cook with. We have a coffee pot. Um, we can't live without the coffee. The coffee. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's all there is. Um, but a little heater or a little fan, not a whole lot of electricity around us. Not a lot. That's a good thing. And I think only a, yeah. Yeah. So always... it, it, it's helped me tremendously, but I can go out. Where the Wi-Fi actually starts, I can feel it, and I avoid it. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, in fact, that they just upgraded my router here, and it's got 5G capability. For they say it's the, the distance isn't as good on it, but you can connect your phone to it. So it's like, and that's right next to me too. So it's like I'm getting bombarded. But I always, you know, I ground myself a lot. I uh, actually have a grounding cable that I'll ground. Uh, I use one of those wristbands that you can order if you work on sensitive electronics to ground yourself and I'll ground myself because it helps the waves pass through you and I'll even wear it when I'm sleeping sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's like walking on the earth barefoot. So it can be handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. I know I used to have to, when I worked at an electronics factory. Yeah. Yeah, a little grounding wire and yeah. Well, yeah, so it's quite interesting <laughs> living here and living out to the city. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> you guys are in the Pacific you should... Northwest, right? Yeah, just south of Tacoma. Oh, okay. So the weather's nice there today, huh? Yeah. We're... Oh, it's beautiful. In beautiful. fact, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's warm enough. <laughs> yeah, it is here too. I think, I think we're already in the nineties here. Probably. I, we're supposed to hit eighty today, and and that's about the average. The past four that we were only in sixty-five, seventy. Maybe. Oh, Maybe. that's that's yeah, perfect that's weather. Yeah, or just has not wanted to come along. I mean, you know, normally it'll warm up and it'll feel like summer and spring. No, it, it's been spring every step of the way here. <laughs> it's been yeah, that's what, cool. That's what Jose was saying. She said uh, it's it's a nice uh, winter we're having this spring because it stayed cold for so long in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Jose. Very well said. Yeah, I like that. We'll say hi to Jose. Yeah, hi, <laughs> yeah, good. shout out to Jose. She's in the chat along with Dad, GPK, and all the mods. Thank you guys for being here, and thank you for everyone else being in the chat with us today. So, tell us about, tell me about uh, your journey and uh, your awakening process. Is this something that's uh, how long? How would you explain that in a nutshell? Oh. Wow. 
It began. No, not shells. <laughs> uh, long time, long time ago. ago. Long time um, ago. <laughs> about 37 years ago, we knew something was different, but there there wasn't internet. And we really didn't know what it was. Alan just thought I had spies all over town um, and would spy on it. <laughs> Turns out she was just a witch. That's yeah. all. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> He is joking. Uh, somebody then, will take me serious yeah. on that. I want to make sure I'm kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> so we knew there was some kind of We just couldn't quite figure it. And we made it about four years before we decided, man, we are just so... We use the word volatile because we were in our 20s. We had this amazing connection. But at the same time, that connection also will purge things. So you'll have these amazingly wonderful bliss times. And then all of a sudden you'll contract. And it's like um, a woman who's in a lot of pain that's having a child and goes through a contraction, sees her head, wants to put her hands around his neck because she's giving birth to his child. Um, and it's one of those things where when you contract it's like the anger and the frustration everything would come up and we had children we had babies and a set it, of twins a set of twins yes yeah. wow <laughs> what's the chance and, of that and a two Twin year old giving birth and to twins. it was too volatile at that time so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> So Can't make it up. <laughs> and then yeah. thing happened with yeah. that. Um, that was about a midway point shortly. After one of our twin daughters was um, um, going to have a baby. And Alan's um, father had, had passed away. Now, mind you, Alan and I had not talked. We had not seen each other nothing nothing no nothing. communication with the children nothing she gave me a bus ticket to leave all those years ago so i'm just like well she don't want to talk to me you know i'm i'm gone so his father passed away and we found out about it and we to be not too far that's one of the synchronicities with alan and i no matter where one is the other one was always about three hours away we had no idea what each other was doing or or how we were moving but we synchronistically moved together without knowing we were moving together. it was odd yeah so our daughter was pregnant with our grandson and and um, his father had passed away. So I was bringing the children to um, his little hometown, give what support we could to him and his mom. And I'm on the front porch, and Alan does too. We're standing on the front porch, and he used my hand, not on purpose. And all of a sudden, this lightning bolt shot through me and went, oh, no, not again. <laughs> um, never been apart. Yeah. There had never been any time between us. We picked up where we didn't have the volatile going on. The most pleasant day. In fact, I was excited. I think you were, too. It was like, it explained it as it was kind of like coming home again before it was really messed with that familiarity you know there was a little a little but very little you know getting to read maybe about five minutes and we just picked right up where we left off except this time it was nicer yeah <laughs> the time before it wasn't so nice only it wasn't real nice for the girlfriend that he had at the time mm, yeah oops <laughs> and uh so we were only day and the children went with dad and it was like it was it was bizarre is what it was it yeah. was like it unfolded so very surreal day 
that was a midway point. And I'm going at the time I was very, very religious and I'm going, God, what do you, you cannot possibly want me to be with this man. I just, I don't even going on. So we separated, but we talked a couple of it back to um, where I was going. And I'd always had these gifts. So I thought, hmm, Pentecost. Hmm. I'm with you. Now, when you can go, go to a Pentecostal church and they think, what's wrong with you? <laughs> then you stop to wonder and you go, what's wrong with me? <laughs> That's totally true. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going through these. Yeah. Are you kidding me? We're going through these motions. And I had been married to somebody else for 22 years. Nice, um, very great dad. And later on, Alan thanked him and said, "You don't. I don't think I could have done it." Killed him. <laughs> and I told, and, and every time he just like it was that close, that close. I don't know how many times it was that close. Blame you. And if anybody's intrigued about um, twin flames having children. Um, at the time that they're conceived, they carry that vibration that the parents do at that particular time. And we kept thinking, what is going on? And they're, they're beautiful kids. They, um, mm -hmm. they do their own thing. And they just kind of look at us like, twin flames? What the heck is that? Yeah, like we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but we had reached this point where I became very ill. Um, but not before Alan and I hit that 10 year mark. And I was listening to him on the radio. My daughter called and said, mom, I think, um, grandma Shirley died. And I said, I had a dream. She died last night too. Let me see if I can find your dad. Well, Guys, I got to tell you, this is not an easy thing to do to find Alan when Alan doesn't want to be found. Uh, so I'm searching everywhere. And lo and behold, I come across um, this article that Alan is working for a radio station in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I'm in Colorado Springs, three hours away. And so I, I live stream his radio show. And I'm listening to it for a couple of weeks, you know, and I'm thinking, I really got to reach out to him. Mm, but how do I do this? Um, and so I sent him a song request via email, the radio station. And it was SD Taylor is my. SD Taylor 80911 at yahoo.com. I can't believe you still remember that. Um, and I can't remember what I had for dinner yesterday. You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Lo well, and behold, I'm thinking I'm just putting a and then he comes back and, and says, San, is that you? And I'm like, oh, how does he know that? <laughs> and it's like, rot row. I thought that was me that done that, not him. And we started talking and just close. It almost seemed like closure, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, in a way it did. Yeah, yeah, it was like we were saying things that we never said. And then all of a sudden he came back and said, I never stopped lo loving you, San. Do you know that? Oh, oh no. Here we go. <laughs> and it was like my whole body drive. It was tingling all over. And I'm like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> And theme here. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in a relationship with a woman yeah. and I've been married for 22 years. And I I I always, always loved he had his own journey he had to be on and I had mine. Um, but we kept in contact and we kept talking because there was a lot of closure that was happening. Because we never really did that. The whole time that she was off doing her thing, I was like up to here, here at addictions huge, huge addictions. And I mean, I was able to function somehow. I was functional barely, but you know, I just kind of, after that 
failed relationship, which at the time, that's what I thought it was, yeah. that it was a connection at that point. I just thought, well, you screwed this one up too. And, you know, which seemed to be a pretty common theme in my life. So I just, wham, I just hit, hit the addiction scene really, really hard. And so now we've got this that we think is um, closing things when actually what it was doing was breaking them wide open. And I'm married to this man. He's been in a relationship with the woman that really was not happy when we had connected 10 years <laughs> before that <laughs> and did not like me at all or the kids. And, and I'm thinking, wow, this, this is what is going on here. The energy amped up. The energy was intense. We were, we'd start out talking a couple hours a day via email. And then all of a sudden it was, five hours a day yeah. and then six hours a day. And then it was, we were texting or whatever all day long. And it's like, Oh my God, we cannot be doing this. And, um, pretty soon it just all broke wide open. And we were like, how do we explain this? Because not only were we having discussions, we were having very deep discussions yeah. and what we could have done differently and, and how we reacted when we split up. It wasn't like, um, bye Felicia. It right. wasn't like that at all. <laughs> Later we'll talk again. And so this started building up and building up and building up. Um, meantime, I had been going, um, to empath, um, groups and doing Reiki, all my Reiki courses. And I was a brain injury tech, you know, he's, he's a DJ on the air. Um, and what was really bizarre was I left the brain injury, um, world and went radio. And I, I thought, what am I doing? And yeah, this was before she even knew what I was doing. Yeah. She had no idea. And so here we were, um, I'd always told him, you have the most beautiful voice. You would be great in radio, not thinking he was actually doing it. Um, <laughs> and, and so we look at all the synchronicities along the path, even though we had no connection with each other, but I would dream about him and I think, what is wrong with me? Why am I dreaming about my ex-husband? We couldn't even get along for five minutes in the same room. They had a motto in our hometown, and I will not repeat it, but Alan and I knew us. They knew us well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so all of these things started unfolding, and a, a very simple conversation came up, and that was, Sam, I have this man, and he keeps coming into the studio. And um, when he comes in, he talks, 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 but he drains me. Nice guy, but by the time he got done, it felt like I had been talking with people for like twelve hours straight. You know, some you know how there's yeah. some people that'll just take it out of you. You know, so he was completely drained, and I was like, "Isn't that weird?" Because about a year ago, I had bought a tourmaline because I was experiencing extreme headaches. But at the same time, I got the tourmaline. I bought a clear quartz crystal in a gold setting, which I don't wear gold, I wear silver. So mine was in silver. This one was in gold. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute here. I said, I've got something I'm going to mail to you. I want you to put it on right away. And then I want you to tell me what happens when the man comes in. Um, so it took him a couple of days. He got it. He let me know. He put it on right away. And, I, th and I think just to kind of give you an idea where I was at it th during this point, I hadn't even touched spirituality yet per se. I had just then started listening to like the, the different uh, wavelengths of binaural beats. Okay. Mm. Just, just to try to, you know, <coughs> meditate or calm Excuse down. Me. Cause my head was constantly going and stop ever. And I had to try cause it felt like some days my head was just going to freaking explode. So I had to find a way to shut my brain down or slow it down because it was just constantly racing. And so I'm, I'm just getting started, just kind of dipping my feet in the shallow end of the pool at this point. 
So I told him, I said, I'm going to send this to you. You put it on. So he did. And he calls right away. He didn't text. He called. And he said, he came in. I had the crystal on. And when he left, I wasn't tired. What is going on? And so that began the the spiritual conversation broke open. Yeah, that's kind of when it started. And then very bizarre things started happening to him. He would hear a voice. And oh, that was the weirdest thing ever for me. I, I'd just be driving or sitting on the front porch having a beer after work or whatever. And I would just hear this. I'd be like, God, <laughs> is that and anything more than my name? But everyone, and, and it was clear as the bell. And I'd be, you know, a little loopy. I'd have maybe six, seven, eight beers. For me, that was just getting started. <laughs> and, you know, so I wasn't just hearing stuff. I knew that. And I knew me well enough. I knew my own body well enough to know, okay, somebody is trying to get my attention. You know, somebody wants me to know they're there, but who is it? I had no idea. So he's thinking he's losing his mind, okay? Mm -hmm. But he got confirmation through his girlfriend at the time. And he was sitting outside and she thought she heard him say her name. Her name. I was sitting outside. She was inside on our couch watching TV. And at, at some point I heard that Alan again, but it was a little bit louder. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm on to you now. All right. I got you. <laughs> And next thing you know, she comes outside and says, what do you want? And I was like, what do I want? What? And she's like, you just called me. I'm like, no, I didn't call you. And she goes, I heard you. I'm like, I haven't said a word. There's nobody out here. And I didn't call you. She sat there and argued with me. And again, I was, which is going to be a common thing. You're going to find out if we get too much into this. But <laughs> I had had about six or seven or eight beers and I was kind of on my, for me, but I'm just like, no, I swear to God, I didn't call your name. So it just, you know, she went back inside and I was just like, okay, this is getting really weird now. You know, she hears me call her telepathically. I'm like, get out of here. Okay. All right. Well, by the end of that particular day, Alan's on the phone with me and he's hysterically, he's crying, he's upset. He's like, what is going on? I think I'm losing my mind, Shane. I, I do. I think, oh God, it's it's coming. I've heard of it. <laughs> I've only drank too much and my brain is now soggy. I am going off to the, to the, the fairy land, something, you know. Getting him calmed down you know i and we're connected this has to mean you have gifts okay now mind you we don't know anything about twin flames yet and so call a shaman that i knew and i said i really need your help very hysterical man on my hands who doesn't understand what's going on and it sounds to me like he's a medium and so he gets on the phone with him, calms him down. Everything was good. We didn't talk again until Monday. But as we're going on, I'm thinking, I really need to write him a letter and tell him um, the different times throughout my life when I would get really and be suicidal. I had my own addictions I was dealing with and I would be very suicidal. And all of a sudden, Alan, like he was standing in front of me, knowing he wasn't in town. I, I would call my dad right away. Here, what is Alan doing here? But it was every time that I even had a thought about taking my own life that Alan would appear, and my dad would say, "I think we need to ha take you to the hospital because this is a common theme that when you get depressed, Alan appears." And it was like, okay, now everybody thinks I'm crazy. And so I, I wanted to write all this out. And I did. We still have the letters that I wrote him um, and told him there's connection. And I cannot put my finger on it. So 
through all of this, I started investigating what is going on? What is this connection? And found out about twin flames. And yeah, this is a bunch of hokey stuff. Um, I, I, I get him on the phone and I go, I got to go down this list because you are not going to believe this. And we hit every single one, but one. I think we were like, okay, now we better, we better find out what this twin flame thing is all about. But now we're bringing up the addictions and we're bringing up the alcohol and everything that went on. Um, when Alan and I in and met in Castle Rock, Colorado, it was kind of a mid and we decided, okay, anybody can strike up a romance on the computer, but you know, we really need to meet in person what's going on you know i should have learned the first few times that happened that it was going to have the same result i was just hoping it wasn't him and <laughs> so <laughs> we did we met up, up um and a friend of mine took me in and we noticed that people were sitting there there were these weird physical things that were happening to us and the energy was ramped up and oh, people man. would come up and they'd start talking to us and and one lady out of the blue walked up and she goes can i tell you something everybody else is telling me something so you might as well <laughs> why <tell>. not <laughs> and she, you have the most beautiful looks i've ever seen and i thought what, what? And so Alan and I are looking at each other and he's kind of rubbing my lower back, you know, and he's like, and we're feeling these, this connection and we're going, oh my God. Well, we stayed there for a few hours. We had a couple of drinks. We got something to eat. He headed off to Wyoming, Colorado Springs. I wasn't driving. I was very health conscious, jogging 10 miles a day. Um, do doing p98 i mean very very healthy we got about 15 minutes away i doubled over in pain and and i told my girlfriend i said can you pull into that mcdonald's because something is really wrong and she pulled over and i said you're gonna have to help can't get out and it took everything i had to get to the mcdonald's restroom and when I did, I was like, something's not right. I understand this. And a couple of days later is Mr. and found out I was very ill and did not know it. And upon Alan and I coming together, that energy just ramped up. And it was like Alan saying, you're in Christ. Pay attention to what your body's saying. And all of a sudden I find out I'm not as healthy as I thought. I'm actually in a really bad state and I'm dying. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I contributing in castle. Alan saved my life because here I was this very healthy person living this very active life and um, raising my grandson. And all of a sudden I'm sick. It didn't. So we'll speed it up a little bit here. I got really ill. I went to the doctor and I found out I had a tumor. It was probably about the size of a grapefruit in the uterus. And I was like, okay, I didn't have any insurance. I didn't, there were a lot of things. And they said, basically, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, we can send you to the women's clinic and a friend of mine sent you to the women's clinic. They think you have cancer. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go to the women's clinic. And as I'm going in, um, I'm kind of scared. He's on the phone with me. And I go in and somebody meets me at the door and says, would you like for me to pray with you? And I'm like, with me? why are you praying with me? And people that are coming in here, when they leave, they're getting bad news that you're, you're covered with God before you go in of your examination. And I said, I'm going in so they can tell me what I need to fix. I'm not dying. 
And the lady looked at me and and I was like, serious, I'm not dying. I'm just going in to find out what this is. And I go in and, and the doctor is a very nice lady. And she goes, no, no, I've seen cancer before. This is not cancer. But this is something that needs to be taken care of pretty soon because you've already went through menopause and I had been hemorrhaging since Alan and I had met at Castle Rock. I started hemorrhaging really bad. And so I'm like, like, okay, what are we going to, and, and I just got sicker and sicker. I, I couldn't work. All I could, couldn't eat. All I could do was eat Sonic ice. If anybody loves Sonic ice, so did I. That's what I lived off of for almost two years. <laughs> Sonic ice and, and cinnamon, cinnamon candy. candy. <laughs> wow. um, and so it was like, Wow. So in the midst of this, I couldn't have surgery. Um, I was going through a divorce. <laughs> um, these were just seemed like they were falling apart and time came and, and I got a return. Saying, you know what? I want all of my family together in this park. I'm going to, we're going to bring everybody in and let the family spend. And I had told Alan all along, and he had said it too, while we were in relationships, we could not come together physically um, on a sexual level. We could talk, we could have conversations, but we had to do this right. We were not gonna do this wrong. So the divorce was final. And that year on Easter, I rented a cabin in Estes Park, brought which ones could come, all of the grandkids. Alan had never met the grandkids. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we've got pictures of orbs. Uh, um, it was the most amazing four days. Beautiful. Alan and I were just like we'd never been apart. There were no feelings there were nothing nope. and he looked at me at the table. one point i looked at you and i said wow you really are the matriarch of all of this and i was like I'm from you know right what <laughs> and was a, a turning point where Alan and I couldn't come together. I had to sleep quite frequently and take naps because I was two or three times a day, but it was just so intense and I wanted to hold him me and needless to say, it happened only a couple times, but short things happened. We left that weekend and it was going to leave. Nobody wanted to leave. They wanted to stay in that moment. And but I have a doctor's appointment in a couple couple days. So convinced that by Alan and I coming together, that tumor would be gone. And so I kept telling him, I may be napping, but I feel really rejuvenated. And I just know they're going to tell me that tumor is gone. Well, after, lo and behold, tumor gone. Only wow. that's amazing. That that one was gone, the grapefruit size. And an eight ounce one was actually in the uterus. And the doctor said, this is like you've been growing a tumor since you gave birth to your kids, that you gave birth to the twins. This tumor has since then. So it is the size of a full term baby. Oh my God. And then we had a bigger problem. And they wouldn't have found that except they were looking for the other one. They're like, well, where'd the other one go? I don't know how they, they missed it, but they missed it. Yeah. The first, I don't know how you miss something like that, but they did. And they were wondering, okay, well, where'd the first one go that we found? And they started looking at it and then they're just like, oh my God. Prod me, yeah. they're wanting to do exploratory surgery. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute here. For the first time in over, I think it was like a year at that time, um, I haven't been 
hemorrhaging for the past two weeks you can prod on me. Um, I don't think so. Um, I was going to a Reiki practitioner and having Reiki done and um, that was the only thing energy to go out and find a job that I had never done before, right? Medical insurance. And so they scheduled the surgery and remember my best friend at the time, never forget this, uh, Veronica. And she's tech the whole time that I'm in surgery. I've got a shaman with me. I've got my Reiki practitioner with me. I got my best friend and I got the love of my life. Next. And so I, I told Alan, I said, I'm going in. Two things are going to happen. Okay. Either I'm going to die on the table and you know that I adore you and cheer me. And it was meant to be this way. Or I'm coming out the other end, a really different person. So I'm sitting here today. I came out a completely different person. So <laughs> I was going to say, what finally happened? <laughs> <laughs> what a miraculous story. Well, that's basically kind of like how we found out we were twin flames and we've been just kind of, but that, that was only the door opener though for us. Yeah. Yes. Alan no longer drinks, guys. He had no, drank for quit. 40 some years, put it down, never had a DT, and he drank a lot. At, he dr at least an 18 pack a day, at least, and I mean every day. He completely just put it down, and it was like, Are you kidding me? And the whole time I'm getting downloads saying this is going to be really tough, but you guys are here to assist each other. And he will not have DTs. He will not have issues. We've got to move you guys along. And that's what I kept hearing. Move you guys along. You've got to move forward. And we did. We made preparations, uh, found a little place to live, and walked away from everything. I mean, we took very little with us and started new. And it was not that our lives were unpleasant or anything where we were up until we decided to get, it was just like we knew that we were not being authentic with ourselves and let alone the other people that we were with. You know, so, we, we had got comfortable in some very uncomfortable situations and the universe was saying, time to get uncomfortable in that uncomfortable. You're never going to move forward if you don't shake it up and realize it's time to get uncomfortable. We all get very, um, what is it Jim Carrey well, says it, in our It's kind of like that when we had you on, on Shane in our open, it says, you know, Jim Carrey says most people live lives of fear disguised as practicality. And we realized that's what we were doing because society says, well, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You should act this way. You know, if you're with someone, if you married someone, that's supposed to be for life. So like it or lump it, you know, that's the way you should carry on. And we're just like, no, no, that's not the way it is. Not for us. Because then so, it works out we'll in take alcoholism and things like that to try to substitute or not really being in the right place or trying to be content in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And boy, I leaned on that for years, years and years. If I had one tenth of the money back, I had that I had alcohol alone. I'll just leave it at alcohol. We didn't. Well, I think right at this point, and I give you not. <laughs> that we're going to throw another little universal glitch that we, it was it's not funny but guys it's really funny at the same time as we're going through this um when Ellen and I divorced the discussion came up never signed the divorce papers and I'm like what but I got them back and he's like I didn't, I didn't sign, sign them, them. <laughs> so, my father had signed him yeah the mail ahead of me he signed i never saw him so we were divorced but we weren't divorced all those years oh that's hilarious and i'm like 
<laughs> I didn't think it was too hilarious. I wasn't about to take my soul my my soulmate at that time. I was going to tell him we've been married 22 years, but at the same time, I've been married to Alan too. Oh wow, uh, that's yeah, amazing! You, yeah. you know. Hey, can, let's let's try so, something here because your your audio is getting chopped up. Let's try to kill your camera for a uh, a minute and see if that helps anything. We'll just okay. Let's see if that helps it out a little bit. So let me recap because and uh, because for those who don't know, so you guys got together because it chopped up a little bit. I want to make sure everybody knows you got together. You were married and then you separated or thought you got a divorce for 21 years before coming back together again. Is that pretty much how it went? Uh, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. yeah. 20, like 24 years. Yeah. Something but, like that. I mean, you know, but we really were not, uh, divorced. So it was like, are you kidding me? Um, and then things just started, um, transforming around that so the we went into some of it we started a youtube early on and we started talking about some of these miracles but of the mind now that we pay attention to the small miracles so much that we overlooked before there are so many day to day and a lot of people look for those big miracles when that's what we were doing in the beginning and now we look at these small miracles and say, this is our authentic self. Yeah. They're miracles, but this is what we're all capable of. And stepping into that. Yeah. So the twin flame thing was, I mean, you know, and, and we still adhere to that, but we found out that it, it blossomed into so much more than just a twin flame thing. I mean, you know, our, our journey just started taking all these different side avenues and um, we, we started looking at different things, you know, who we really are. And that was just kind of like the get our foot in the door, you know, the spirituality thing. And it just expanded exponentially, actually, is, is what happened with it. I think it's amazing because when I hear your story and then I think about how I was able, sort of after my awakening, to look back and see how I, I've been on this path the whole time, even though I, I never really knew it. And then I hear you both get into radio separately. <laughs> you both have great yeah. radio voices, by the way. And then you're, you come together to do this radio program. It's like, you know, looking back, it's like, wow, it's like, I, you know, I was on the right path the whole time and I didn't realize it. And it sounds like you guys are dealing with the same thing. What's, yeah. what's really funny about the radio program was Alan was in secular radio. And even when we came back together, um, we would manifest these amazing things. And Alan wanted to go back into radio. I had worked at this radio station and I said, okay, let's go visit the radio station. Chances of you meeting the person you need to talk to are nil to none, but let's do it anyway. We walk in the door together and here comes the guy he needs to talk to. And I went, the program director the, for all six stations in this conglomerate. Yeah. As we walk in the door and I went, Hey, Bobby, how are you doing? He goes, Hey, Sandra, how are you? I said, well, you're just the person we need to talk to. I had an interview, basically a five minute interview on the spot with the program director of Cumulus Radio in Colorado Springs, who headed up six stations there. That doesn't happen. So when you they have bring- a great voice though, so I'm sure he heard your voice and was like, yeah, this, this guy's perfect for the job. You know? <laughs> oh, Mr. Golden, Mr. Golden <laughs> Pipes. You. Yeah. Uh, so he goes in for the actual um, meeting with, um, one of the guys that was on the air and the program director and all of this. And they ask him why he moved to Colorado. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about standing in your truth. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to tell him what you said? Uh, what did I, tell him? I, yeah. I, I can't even remember. Now. You said, I was drinking. Well, a lot back then. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. He was like, um, well, have you ever had, had one of those moments where you just don't want any what ifs in your life? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, there, he said they were looking at him like he was an alien. And he goes, well, you know, I reconnected with my, my ex-wife who isn't my ex-wife. Um, and um, we've come back together because we didn't want any what ifs. And then they started talking about how good the food tasted. When Alan and I came together, both of us had this bland Everything we ate was bland. Nothing. It didn't matter. I could put a block of salt on something and I couldn't taste it. And then when we came back together, all of a sudden, food took on this new meaning. Um, it tasted, I mean, wonderful. Even Alan said, oh, my God, the beer tastes really good Even here. Even the beer tasted better. So I'm like, woohoo. All right. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> but I, this transformation that was unfolding so he goes into radio and um i start doing things here and there working with people who are going through this this twin flame journey too um not just people that are on uh, on this journey but people that need to know miracles happen and they're saying, okay, you had these amazing miracles and we barely touch base on, on some of the things that have happened. And so we're, we're moving right along. We're moving right along. We're living up on a mountain, um, in this beautiful cabin in, uh, on Cheyenne mountain. And, um, we started having these supernatural things happen and Shane, has been privy to a couple of the pictures that were taken up on the mountain. Oh, yeah. that Absolutely amazing. And in fact, I don't know why you don't want to share them because they're just, they're so mind blowing. Some of the best images <laughs> I've seen of that, that sort of thing and incredible. But yeah, well, I can and see I, why people would just, you know, it looks too unbelievable. It's just, uh, you know, no, with Photoshop and everything nowadays, people would just be like, oh, there's no way that's real. But you can tell, I can tell. I That's my uh, business. So I can tell, you know, <laughs> it's the real thing. Yeah, well, well, we didn't hardly believe what we were seeing. We're like, are you kidding me? That's how we actually met Michael from Mr. MBB333 yeah. was we were following people and we're like, okay, um, he he's a watchman and we need to send him these pictures so we did and he responded back and ever since then we've just loved 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 like we're we know that we're soul family with him and we know we're soul family with you um we know that your group um in your chat room that comes in we connect with so many people we keep really quiet kind of behind the scenes but it we just know that Everyone is on this frequency mission. Shane has the frequency in his voice. We have the frequency in our voice. Um, Michael has the frequency in his voice. Most people that we come in contact with, they are here to make a difference through frequency. Their voice carries um, activations and keys. Um, and so we've had all of these wonderful amazing things happen and we want people to start realizing we took a jar and this is really relevant i believe um we took a jar when we first came together and we would take little pieces of paper and we would write down things that happened throughout the day that we we want we were going to make it like a vessel that we could open up on New Year's the next year and look back on that year and say, wow, you know, what did we appreciate? What were we grateful for that day? And in the midst of this, we also started putting um, things that we wanted in that jar. Mm -hmm. And so some of them would be small, but one of them was huge. And one of them was to move into this cabin up on Cheyenne Mountain. Other people were living there. I mine and the lady goes no it's not i live here and i said yeah but you're not going to live here forever <laughs> and so i took alan up there because i started dog sitting you would think this lady go you ain't coming nowhere near my house <laughs> I, but watch it. I would go out of town and he'd say would you come up and dog sit you can spend the whole weekend and bring your grandson you know and 
I would just put my hands all over the cabin and go, oh, I love you cabin. I built you for me. And, and then I would touch all over. And I told Alan, I said, you've got to go up there. So we drove up. It was so overwhelming with energy that we couldn't stay more than a half an hour. Yeah. We had to come back because Alan said that's overwhelming. Um, so one of the biggest dreams that we had was to live in that cabin. So we wrote it out on this piece of paper and we put it in our jar with all of our things that we were grateful for. And from the time that Alan and I came together in Estes Park till the time we moved into that cabin, living there was 17 months. Wow. So we did manifest it. Our landlord at the bottom of the hill said, I'm not going to renew your lease. And I said, yeah, but we got two more months. And he's like, no, you signed a 10 month lease. I'm like, but no, I didn't. Alan and I had this discussion that we had the opportunity to move up on the mountain with a nine month lease. But by the time you'd get in there, that was so quick. We really needed a year lease. So we rented a house at the bottom of the hill. And the guy says, here, I'll show you the contract. Showed it to me. There's my Mandela effect for you, Shane. <laughs> wow. Who signs a 10-month lease? I would never sign a 10-month lease, ever. Ever. Not knowingly. So we <laughs> wasn't renew the lease. So I went over to the house and, and talked to him that very last time. And he was really upset. And he was like, I, I just really like you guys. And I don't know why I'm doing this. And I was really hoping that you guys would want to stay and you would come to me and say, can we stay? And I said, but you said you weren't going to renew the lease. <laughs> we so we're making we're plans. Yeah, it's done. I'm packing the house and Alan goes, where are we going? And I said, honey, we're going up on the mountain and we're going to the cabin. And he goes, how are we going to do that? We're broke. I'm like, I'm telling you, we're going. The universe is telling me we're going. And as I'm leaving the landlord's house, I'm five minutes away and the landlord up on the mountain calls my phone and says, the cabin on the mountain has been empty for two months. We've been holding it, waiting to see if you want it. Do you still want it? Oh, wow. The people that had rented the house. Never talked to this guy in person ever. ever told ever. the landlord we wanted it. Okay. Gave more contact info. As we're closing the lease for the house we're in, I'm five minutes away in the car, headed back to the house, and he calls and says it's yours if you want it. Oh, wow. That's just mind-blowing. That's like, man, just living a life of synchronicity like that is just, you know, and then for people that say, you know, that, that was just a coincidence. You're like, dude, how many times does it have to happen before, you know, you realize <laughs> this is something for real happening behind the scenes that, you know, we have no control over that we couldn't have orchestrated it any better, you know? Oh, yeah. And and we're like you. We don't believe in the word coincidence anymore. <laughs> yeah, no more. That, yeah, that stopped a long time ago for us. So we've just had, and we realized during this, you had a lady on, and I got to give kudos to the people that you have on your show. Um, Sylvia said, said something the other day, and I have got to give her a shout out, okay? We're listening, and she's talking about what she does. But during all of this, she was talking about bringing a surrogate in, and that's something that just doesn't happen. But she was prompted by spirit to do that. Mm-hmm. And Alan and I have had this discussion many times, just like with Reiki and learning Reiki, becoming a Reiki master. There's a certain way of doing things. But what the world needs right now is this is an ancient technique that's been around for eons. What needs to happen is people tap into their selves and say, okay, now I have the power to understand the energy. Now, I have to tap into my gifts that say, this is how I need to use it. Rather than because you keep that, that belief system going with any kind of energy that says, I'm the vessel. It comes through me and that's it. Mm. So I'm listening to her. We had just had that discussion. More people need to step out on the edge and go with their inner knowing that says, I have come into Reiki 
or I have come into what is it called? QHH. Yeah, the QHHT, or what's yeah. he called? What was it? The VHT? Yeah. Uh, yeah the BQH, the Beyond Quantum Healing. That's yes. the yeah, one yeah, where yeah. you can do it from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, she really stepped into something that can be scary. And that's what Alan and I do. Um, we take the, the, the Reiki principles, but without even realizing it, we started doing something and I'm like, okay, the universe is telling us to step into our knowing. And so we started doing energy work as a team. And we would have people come to us. And Alan is um, this amazing energetic person. And I am the magnetic. So I can scan someone's body. And I can find things that are going wrong. And I shake like um, I'm coming out of my skin when I come across something that is not right in the body. And Alan works with me and we see miraculous things happen. Um, and like we can go in and we can tell if someone has cancer, what stage they have. And we're like, verify it through your doctor, you know, um, do this, do that, you know, but people need to step out of the box and realize we've been given these techniques. Now step into your knowing what gift do you have that you add to it that makes it unique? And everybody has that. Everybody. We just don't know it or we think it's crazy or it's just, and I think it's wonderful because um, when I had a session with you guys, uh, when was it last week? It was amazing to feel the, I had this ambient pain in my shoulder. You were able to find that. I felt it dissolve away while you were doing it. And it was it wasn't completely healed. It, in fact, I realized, um, I, I think I've been injuring it. I think I get up in the middle of the night and perch myself on my, like I'm about to get up, but then I rest on my elbow and like kind of half sitting up in the bed because mm -hmm. my dreams maybe are intense or whatever. But I noticed I, cause my other shoulder started hurting and I remembered waking up and falling asleep like that kind of up on, on my shoulder with my head crooked. Just, I don't know why I did that, but I Ooh. think I'm injuring it over and over again yeah. and i don't i just don't remember it because i'm not laying all the way down i think i start to roll over and get up and then stop for some reason so, so I, that's where the wow. rotary cuff damage was coming from <laughs> that we picked up on yeah. so you're leaning up on it you're putting the pressure down on it and your neck is is twisted in an yeah. unnatural way and then i fall asleep like that and i wake up oh. in pain and i'm so out of it i don't even realize what i was doing but i'll just wake up in a lot of pain so you know, now both sides are hurting a little bit, and I think it's because I do that. But definitely, you you were able to scan, and I was able to feel results instantly. And uh, I just gotta learn to lay down and <laughs> not <laughs> hurt. I'm gonna strap you down, man. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> That's another reason why we're out in the wilderness is because when we go into town, Shane, I don't even have a driver's license. I can't drive. Um. The universe took that away from me in the most freaky way ever. Mm -hmm. um, and Alan takes me everywhere. Um, I, I can be out and all of a sudden my vision goes completely blurry and I go into an altered state and I can't see where I'm walking. So he guides me back to the vehicle and gets me home as quickly as possible. It's like you're shifting into a different dimension or the spiritual world or something like that. Yes. So yeah. I can see things that are very, very, um, very in my face um, when my eyes go blurry, but I can't see um, what's actually going on in the 3D environment around me. Definitely don't want to be driving while that's happening. Then is that so it's kind of well, like someone has seizures. You can't really turn it off when it does it, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I exactly. can't. Right. I got to let it, yeah. it run its course. Um, but one thing that I wanted to really make sure that people knew was when we were up on the mountain, um, it, it, it almost felt like something was shifting. And I um, was told that we were to leave the mountain. And I and Alan and I were like, what? What do you mean? Um, 
and we were going to go out into the wilderness for 52 days. Um, actually, it was 54. You get one day to un to get everything set up and one day to pack to break it down, pack it up. So it was a total of 54, but 52 in the wilderness. Mm. And so we're going, what? And I wake up one morning and I go, honey, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I said, I was what? hoping it was going to be like Elix Gardens or something. <laughs> <like that. laughs> no. So we're giving we're giving things away and we're saving what we feel is necessary. We're going to put it in a storage unit and we're going out and. Our grandson went to live with my ex-husband, so we weren't dragging him around um, out in the wilderness. And um, at that time, we were working with a lot of people. And um, it was almost like the universe was shutting it down, shutting it down, shutting it down. And we needed to go out into the wilderness and reconnect. Boy, did we reconnect. Did we ever. We couldn't even connect with people that we would plan Skypes two weeks in advance to meet with them. And then when the time would come, the computer would just go haywire. It, it wouldn't allow us to hear them or um, it was just bizarre. And so we're out in the wilderness. We're getting ready to come out. And where we are right now in Washington, this couple flies us out here for 22 days when we came out of the wilderness and said we're gonna we're gonna supply everything that you need you're not to worry about anything um and just enjoy it and and we got to see the eagles the just amazing things and then we went another place then we got tickets to go to new york for 11 days something like that. yeah, yeah. 11 days. with another set of twin flame these are twin flame couples stepping up to the plate okay and saying would you come and see us we're sending you plane tickets wow so we did and we got back to denver and we're not working with a whole lot of clients now remember we went out for 52 days then we've been on this excursion to washington for 22, go to Woodland Park for, I think, 30 days or so. Yeah, about that. With yeah. another twin flame couple. <clears throat> and then we leave there and we're going to New York and we come back and we're going to Denver. Okay. We're in Denver and Alan's like, okay, well, I'm going to go to work for a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. He put out resumes everywhere. Did you know not one radio station called him? But, wow, that's the big, and that just goes to show those golden pipes. You know, there was something stopping it, stopping <laughs> it from happening, right? <laughs> yeah, it was not going to happen at all. <laughs> so we sat on the back porch one night, and I said, "Honey, what is it that you really want in a radio station? We're really aware of what you don't want, but what if we bring our awareness to what you do?" And he goes, "Well, I'd like to have a radio station that aligns with what I believe and what." I feel the passion about and not being caught up in, well, let's cut this time down because you're talking too much and not allowing the personality to come through and him to be who he is. And I think two days later on November the 5th, um, we got a message from TFR and said, you know, if you wanted to be on a radio show, why didn't you just ask us? And we're thinking, why would we? You own this <laughs> huge radio station and we would never even think to ask. And so at first we think Alan's going in to do his own radio show. Okay. <laughs> and I'm sitting outside while he's interviewing with these people. And they say, where's Sandra? And I'm sitting outside and he goes, come on, they want to talk to you. And I'm like, what? We get in there. They wanted twin flame divine fire. Wow. And I'm thinking, um, I'm a radio person behind the scenes doing sales. And you want me to what? <laughs> so That's absolutely that, amazing. 
yeah, that's how it all started. And we were like, what, what is, what's happening? That was November of what year? That was, um, we've been on the air over a year and a half on Twin Flame well, Divine Fire. So that was in 16. Yeah, 2016. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. That's funny that you mentioned that about not being able to get a job. Uh, I think it was uh, around November or December, you know, my wife was like, you know, what are we going to do about money? You're not making any money doing this thing. And, you know, we got Christmas coming up, you know, and I had faith things would work out. But, you know, a lot of times when you have your partner just hammering and you, you just, you know, you start to feel like a bum, even though you're working all the time, you know, and it's yeah. like, so I started trying to put in all these freelance graphic design jobs like I normally do. Uh, and, you know, I put so many in practically giving away my services. Not one single person hit me up, not for a simple $20 logo job or something that I was, like I said, I was just giving away. I'm like, uh, if I do enough of these for cheap enough, I can at least bring in, you know, do five of them, bring in a hundred bucks or something that'll help out. You know what I mean? And nothing. I, I couldn't give away my services. I'm like, look, I'm trying. And I showed her all the things I spent all day submitting and, and, you know, I got that lull in my putting out videos back in December. And that's why, because I was trying to, you know, go back to 3d for a while and, you know, you know, worry, worrying about Christmas and trying to keep people in the family happy and, you know, but it didn't work out. And I'm like, look, I just got to do what I'm supposed to do. You know? I mean, things will work out. So, so I understand. And I've seen things happen synchronistically like that to keep you on path. And I'm thankful for it. I think it's our higher self stepping in we are always yeah. always yeah, yeah. protected but as a, a human race we've been socially um taught that we must work and we must work hard and we must do this and we must do that shana i'm going to give you one simple phrase to say several times a day and then you tell me after a week what happens mm -hmm. okay okay do you or do you not believe that you deserve to be supported in your passion. Definitely. Okay. So when you wake up in the morning before your feet hit the ground, be grateful for what you're doing because you're doing great works. Okay. Absolutely. So what you need to say is I deserve <laughs> to be supported for my passion. I deserve to be supported for my passion. Yes. And because so many times we get caught up in, yes, you've got a spouse that says, you better get a job. We need some money coming in here. Mm -hmm. But we're all about, you need to step into the knowing and the miracles that are inside of you. You're a universe mm -hmm. inside of you that is capable of stepping into your passion and making a difference for a lot of people. But you need to know it. I have a sign behind us on our window mm -hmm. that someone embroidered for me that says, sometimes you must believe to see things happen. I like that. Not, Instead of I'm, seeing is believing, believing is seeing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you believe and put that vibration out, that vibration comes back to you. So you need to understand you're a powerful, you're a powerful cosmos in a physical vessel mm -hmm. and you're doing great work. We watch what you're doing. We know what you're doing. And, you've and I love it. I don't, I don't mind not making any money doing it. I'm like I do this for free. It's just, you know, and, and I don't have any problem believing things will be taken care of. But, you know, when you have other people, you're like, just believe. And they just kind of look at you like you're wacky, you know. It's uh, it kind of wears on <laughs> we get We get those looks of wackiness, too. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I can honestly tell you, we have never been in physical danger. Um, it will notice that we're getting down to the wire on things and that fear will try to creep in and as soon as we back off and we say oh my goodness we live in this little bitty cabin in the most beautiful place in washington right off we are 10 feet from the water we have eagles land 10 feet on the ground from the cabin we can see them and they're massive um we have critters that come in that alan feeds like he's on a farm <laughs> um, and we That's have beautiful. this yeah, we have this beautiful environment and we manifested this. 
so that we could really link into Gaia and assist her. And this is an amazing time to be alive, but a lot of people say, okay, well, I live in a, in a 3D world. How do I maintain my 3D world and try to step off of the grid or try to step off out of the matrix? Mm -hmm. You have to know and believe that it's possible or it won't happen. So believe it and you will see it. And I can say that's worked for me. You know, we, like I said, we've had things come down to the wire, like you were just saying, but I'm not going to worry about it. And, you know, it gets taken care of at the last minute. And, you know, and I'm like, see, and then, you know, I've even had her try it a few times, you know, I'm like, have you ever even tried to just ask, just ask for what you need, you know? And she did it one day and she sent me a message uh, on Facebook messenger. And she's like, it worked. I asked and like somebody gave me a $60 tip, you know, cause she's a waitress and, and I'm like, see, and you know, but you know, it doesn't take long for that to wear off. And you know, you, the doubt creeps back in, you know, you kind of got yeah. coming in. <laughs> I yeah, have a phys true, I have a physical manifestation that if we can turn the camera on, I'd like to show your audience. Yeah, let's do can it. Can we do that? Yep. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So uh, I've been prompted this week that every day as the tide is is in and it's on high to go out on the kayak for two hours every day and really connect in. Um and so I have this amazing, beautiful angel that I work with. And we got this when we came to visit the last. Wow, that's huge. This is actually a wing feather of an eagle. Okay. This is their navigational feather. Yeah. One of the flights. Okay. Now you see how huge that is. And one of the ladies that we work with, she says, oh my God, that's beautiful. I would love to have one of them for my altar, for my smudging and everything like that. Well, it would be impossible, number one, to mail this, okay, because yeah, it's yeah. huge and it somehow or another would get bent, possibly get broken. Mm -hmm. But this one, hold when, when we leave here, because we are supposed to go to Ecuador, um, the hosts that own this property, this is their feather. But I went out that morning and I said, okay, universe, I've been in kind of a, um, um, an expansion and contraction mode. And as I'm out on the water, I'm in complete bliss. Alan's still sleeping. He has no clue I'm out on the water. <laughs> and I'm like, universe, here's what I need. I have this beautiful angel and she would love to have one of these navigating feathers. These are really hard to find. You can find regular feathers like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is a navigating feather. Eagles do not lose these very frequently. Not very often. Okay. That we so know anyway. I go out on the water and that feather I just showed you is a blue heron feather that was floating in the water. And I'm like, ah, now we're getting somewhere in the universe. <laughs> but I need a navigational feather for this beautiful angel. Okay. But it needs to be smaller. And. She found one. Wow, there it is. Okay. It is a good six inches shorter than the other one. Identical. Yeah. And that tells me, ask for what you want. Ask. I'm just a little confirmation. And then keep an eye out for it. Yeah. It so is. even the host... I've never seen somebody find one of them, but then we find a second one, smaller, which had to be closer to the tip of the wing. That to be the smaller. You might want to try to send it in the yeah. tube. One of those tubes might protect it. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Good That's idea. A perfect. But this is this is what I mean by even the small <laughs> miracles. I mean, you think, okay, well. I'm never going to find one of them, but I went out that day and I'm like, okay, universe, I'm on a treasure hunt. You need to bring it to me. And I was actually sitting in the middle of the water and here it came floating. That's amazing. Straight yeah, biker babe actually had a story where she had, a, she had received a feather. Uh, it was one of those little feather plumes or whatever, but it was a, 
in regards to something she was asking for. So it was a really interesting story. I'm going to have her on hopefully someday soon if she can stop working so many hours. <laughs> I think a lot of us are working ourselves to death, you know. Yeah, amen. Amen. Well, and I, I, I just think it's really important. You have beautiful people in, in your listening audience. Oh, you you do. And, yeah. and just amazing discussions that you're having and you're breaking you're breaking the eggshells. You know how people say, well, you know, I have this belief, but I'm walking on eggshells because people think I'm crazy. You mm -hmm. got people stomping that crap out of those eggshells and going, <laughs> it's, it's gone. no more walking on eggshells. Right. <laughs> you know, that, that's amazing that you say that because it, it really makes me, uh, uh, when I think of the fact that when I was in church, you know, and you feel like you're on the narrow path, but then you have to leave everybody in church to sort of venture on through the church into a, a deeper spiritual walk. And you're like, wow, the path just really got narrow. And then you find yourself out on the limb. And it's like, uh, you know, I think God appreciates those willing to step out on a limb and, you know, go that extra mile to seek out the divine, if you will, you know. Yeah. You have to lose your yeah. mind to actually lose your beliefs. Right. You know, and step into that knowing. And right now we're in a place where um, our, we need to take a look. If we're having any discomfort in the lower three chakras right now, this is the universe highly and, 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 impressing upon you to pay attention and to bring all that energy up into the heart chakra because that is your new base. If there's anything in the lower chakras that is creating dis-ease or like tension in, the, a lot of people are feeling it in the solar plexus, the tightness mm -hmm. and saying, what is this? I don't understand. But if you look in your environment, something that has to do with your, this has to do with your identity, your purpose in life. Are we not fully stepping into our knowing and our gifts? And the universe is trying to get you to pay attention and say, God, that hurts. You know, mm -hmm. what is it that I'm supposed to be seeing? Um, and really step into your passion and, and you'd be surprised what can unfold for you believe that you are here to live your passion oh man i think i think you're so right and it's like i feel i feel great now it's like i mean from a 3d point of view people would be like why are you content in your life you know you, you know just where you're at and i couldn't be any more content it's like i can't believe i feel honored to be where I'm at, you know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I know others wouldn't feel the same way, but you know, it's like, I look back at my life and I see everything seems to be, uh, was set up for this very moment of my life. I mean, from yeah. what I went to school for to all my different experiences and everything seemed to be building upon this very moment I'm in right now. And looking back on it, I couldn't have constructed it that way. I didn't, you know, it, Everything just worked out synchronistically for me to end up right here, right now, talking to you two who had a similar <laughs> path, you know? <laughs> I think it's really funny because we never dreamed this is the direction we were going. No. And we try to tell people this is like the double split experiment, okay? If you're looking at something, it, it, it goes a certain direction. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, you know the end result of every situation that you come into. What if you're able to look away and concentrate on your happiness and let the universe step in and give you the infinite possibilities and pick the path of least resistance that works for you? Mm -hmm. Amazing changes happen when you do that. Alan and I are here and we know we're going to Ecuador soon. Um, when we start to go into the mind, we start to see hiccups. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last week. I was so worried about Alan getting his passport that I was putting everything into, oh my goodness, Alan needs to get his passport and I just know <laughs> there's going to be an issue. Guess who had the issue? The queen who saves all paperwork. I have a lease from 1997. She knew all dates, everything. I knew next to nothing. I'm just like, eh, okay, I'll just put this down. This looks good. 
And, <laughs> right. You know, it, because I couldn't remember. Plus, there was no record of anything that they wanted. So I'm just like, well, if there's no record, I guess it doesn't really exist in that particular timeline. So I'll just go with it. I did. No problem. I got mine. Little Miss Thang over here who knew everything <laughs> down to four days away of stuff that happened 20 years ago. It's like, we have an issue with yours. Okay. And I couldn't help but laugh. It got me in a lot of trouble, but I couldn't help but laugh at the irony of that. <laughs> yeah, I heard so, you guys talking about that on the Sunday show. And it's like, th that gets into the twin flame thing, how, you know, one of, it's like you guys are a perfect match for each other. <laughs> so it's it's amazing just to watch how the energy works and sometimes we'll get caught up in the day-to-day -day things and i said the irony of this whole thing was the people that know everything about everybody instead of looking at it like they're coming to me to ask me about me because they don't know it's kind of cool right but to me it was like a hiccup all of a sudden and I had this emotional outburst and started crying. I was like, don't cry. <laughs> but he's standing on the front porch. But honey, I got my passport. I didn't. <laughs> you were so cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So we got it. We have to take the, the, the mind out of the equation and just allow the flow. And sometimes we get the mind involved that says, well, I can't do that. And that's a simple, that it's a simple concept, but it's not easy, as you all know. Oh, definitely. One thing I've noticed lately is if something's out of my hands and I don't know the answer to it, I just immediately say, oh, thank God, I don't know, because I know my higher self does, and I don't need to worry about it to be handled, because it has up to this point. So, <laughs> you know, there, see? I'm talking about <laughs> Shane gets it. That's what I'm talking about. Cause she's just like, how can you not be concerned about anything? I say, well, I ask myself a question. Can I do anything about it? If the answer is no, why worry about it? If the answer is yes, then I do the next step to resolve that issue or whatever it is. And then I ask myself that question to go and I repeat the, the first two steps. If you can do something about it. Great. If you can't, I worry about it. <laughs> so I, I tell him all the time that women's brains, yay, shout out to all of the feminine. Shout out to the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> in your chat room. Women are hardwired to everything. I love the tale of two brains. Women's brains are like a big ball of wire and they go. Zip, 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 zip. Everything's connected. Emotion, kids, husband, finances, it doesn't matter what it is. Everything is emotionally connected and men have their boxes. They compartmentalize everything. So the, the wife and the kids have a box, um, work has a box, and then there's the nothing box and there's nothing in it. And women can't have a nothing box <laughs> because they want to put flowers and pictures and everything like that they in it. So it they, yeah. they can't have a nothing box, but I look at it, this whole situation brought me to this understanding that men are wired different than women. So Alan's like, woohoo, we're going to get our passports. And I'm going, oh my God, what could go wrong? Even, <laughs> even in this entire journey of having these amazing miracles, we all still have beliefs and we're trying to break them down and shed them. And the universe will let you know when you're too much in that brain and that emotional conduit that says, bzz, 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 bzz. and let's think about this differently, Sam. So I told Alan, I said, men, men have it easy. And no wonder women woke up before men did. <laughs> More time to unwire the. Bzz, 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 bzz. Yeah, it's hard to wake us up when we're in our empty box, huh? You guys are jelly. You guys want an empty box is what it is. I just want to go do nothing for a while. <laughs> I want to go to a nothing box. I want to sit and, and and be able to think of nothing. And how many times has your wife come up and said, what you thinking about? <laughs> totally and you're like, true. nothing. Oh, if you ever get a chance to check that out on YouTube, Mark Gungor, G-U-N-G-O-R. It's two hilarious. Oh my God. And he does such a good job of explaining it too. And I'm just, that 
me. That's for me. <laughs> you said Mark Gungor? G-U-N-G-O-R. You got to check that video. There's different lengths of it, depending on how much detail you want to get into. The whole thing is good. It's so good. Awesome. <laughs> but it really gives credence to the way that we're wired. And Alan and I um, have those moments when I'm more compartmentalizing and he's more wired in everything. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm a very analytical person by nature. Anyway, I've had to really train myself not to be d depending on the situation. You, well, you know how that goes, Shane. I oh, mean, there, totally, are some, yeah. there are some situations where you got to be uber analytical and there are other situations. You're just like, go back to those two questions. Can I do anything about it? No, nope. don't worry about it. Can I do something about it? Yep. Okay. Take the next step. Then worry about the step after that. Yeah. And and even with the, even with the Mandela effect, I often say that, you know, it was my, that left brain sort of thinking with it and trying to figure it out. At some point I got to, you know what, this, you have to go to the supernatural to come up with your answer for this. I mean, there's some left brain cop outs. I like, I think yeah. Stern or D wave, these are left brain cop outs. In my opinion, these are ways to just sort of stay in the left brain yeah. and say, Oh, well, that's what's doing it. There's nothing we can do about it. There's, you know, but I, I didn't think when I saw the micromanaged nature of the changes and how different people were affected differently and different people saw it. And I was like, man, this, this seems to be orchestrated by a divine and there's no human that could orchestrate it on this level that I'm seeing. And that forced me back to the right brain with it. Um, you go. I can tell Shane, I will tell you this. If there's anybody that's listening to your show and they really would like to see the pictures, they can email us and I will send them the pictures I'm talking about. Um, we have a couple of them on our website in our photo gallery uh, above our about us. Um, but people really, we just, we don't talk about it very much. Yeah. And, and, it, and if any of those email addresses come as, you know, whatever.gov, nah, I probably not. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Let me make sure I've got your, uh, I've got your tfrlive.com twin flame divine fire, uh, address. I've also got your Facebook. I guess people could contact you through your twin flame divine fire Facebook. What else do I have? I've got the iHeart. Dot com. Is there another web address I should have here? Um, we have um, Twin Flame Divine Fire radio show um, on TFR on Facebook. Okay. And there's a contact us button there. Um, we also have Twin Flame Divine Fire at gmail.com. Um, where they can send us an email. Um, we are listed, we're on um, Sandra Allen on Facebook. Um, it says that we're owners of uh, Twin Flame Divine Fire, but we're under Sandra Allen. Um, and we have um, Divine Sexuality for Twin Flames is a, is a group that if people want to know more about the sexual energy and what it's all about. Um, people, um, there's only a couple hundred people in there, but when there's a question that arises about certain energies and manifesting energies and different things like that, um, that group is there. Oh, that's um, perfect. Yeah. Cause someone was asking in the chat, I was mentioning earlier, someone was mentioning about sexual energies and other people talking about mismatches in their relationships. So, uh, let me ask you a question about twin flames real fast. Is that something like, uh, is it just certain select people that are twin flames or is it like, uh, cause it's different than soulmates, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, and, and we kind of think that those terms, so the, you know, the twin flame slash soulmate thing have been used interchangeably and they're not mm -hmm. right. There's, there's quite a bit of difference. I mean, soulmates, we have any number of soulmates, um, throughout our lifetime. I mean, we could have, you know, dozens of soulmates, you know, but twin flames are, they're not the same thing. Well, and, and I think soulmates prepare you um, for, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the term a little bit different for your beloved. 
Um, and that is the person that is of equal frequency, of balanced frequency of your frequency. So this is a person, it's a match, it's a match and it's a perfect An match. Exact match. But when I say perfect, don't get it twisted. <laughs> it ain't perfect. <laughs> it ain't perfect. <laughs> you have these moments of bliss in this expansion. And then when it's time to bring up a belief system that is deeply rooted in you, you will have a severe contraction. And what we mean by that is you're about to get really clear on how you're feeling and you put it on the table and transparency becomes very key. Otherwise it ends up being like a normal, um, soulmate relationship. Okay. You've done made me mad and now we're going to fight. Okay, that would be a soulmate relationship. What we say is you cannot take a connection and blanket a relationship over the top of connection. It doesn't allow it. It's like, okay, I see that I have been triggered and don't take this personal, but I've got to let you know how I feel. And you have to feel at home with that person that says, I can tell you anything and you're not going to go storming out the door to never return again. So it's like uh, you guys are sort of, you, you purposely trigger each other, maybe un unconsciously, but you trigger each other to sort of push yourself down that road of spirituality or growth. And, uh, and you're probably constantly triggering each other and bringing things to light because we can't see things in ourselves that we can see in others. So you have this trust that you know you have the honesty of the other person to share those feelings and then you sort of push each other down the road right is that sort of how it works yeah that expansion yeah. and contraction yeah. well has put. has to occur yeah. in order for us to grow so That's we're going to expand into this beautiful energy and we're just smiling and we're happy and we're having this amazing connection. And all of a sudden the universe goes, okay, time for another round. Let's contract. And <laughs> right. then contraction happens and some very, very deep, deep, serious issues surface. And if you are not at that point where you can be very transparent and lay it out on the table, it will reoccur and reoccur and reoccur until you finally say, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this. Once it's dealt with, it leaves your physical reality. It's kind of like having a house. The way we kind of look at it, it's kind of like having a house and discovering you have termites. Okay. You have termites and, you know, they're chewing away, but you don't really notice it. Not really. Mm -hmm. So you're just like, well, you know, it's not really, you know, noticeable. So. Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, a week or two down, you find out you got some leaky pipes. And you're just like, well, is anything leaking through to where like it's messing up the drywall or anything? No, not really. So don't worry about it. You know, frayed electrical wires, you know, uh, right. faulty framing. You keep finding each one of these little things. And in and of themselves, they're not that big of a deal. But eventually, they're going to cause that house to just collapse one day. And if you don't deal with them when you find them, and, you know, sometimes, it, you know, now is not always the best time. Sometimes you got to kind of step back a little bit mm -hmm. and, you know, come up with a response and not react. But you need to formulate a, a good response and think. And we've learned to sit and, and, and just sit with some things for a while, you know, until there is an appropriate time. Now, that's not to say that we procrastinate. But we've been brought up and I mean, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people now, they react instantly because they always feel they have to defend. I'm still guilty of that. I'm to still this guilty day. of that. But, you know, once you get out of that reactionary mode and go into response way of thinking about whatever it is that triggered you, then things can get solved. But if you react, all you're going to be doing is just throwing gas on that fire. It's not going to get any better. Right. That's you been, don't really deal with it. That's just been our experience. Well, it does have to, it's got to help knowing what's going on and it, just having that knowledge of, okay, I got triggered, what, you know, why? And, and really knowing, understanding the twin flame relationship and understanding why you're here and why you're serving each other. And uh, just to have that knowledge, I'm sure you still get triggered and there's still the 3d emotional response, but 
it's probably easier to push past that to get to the root of the issue if you know that that's what you need to do, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we we went through the reactionary phase when we were married, you know, twenty whatever years ago. I I don't. I'm not good on dates. thirty. Yeah, thirty. 30 yeah, you know, what? Not a long time ago, but right. you know, we we lived through that reactionary phase then, and that didn't turn out so good right. <laughs> at <was> the time. <laughs> it it's really funny to me because back in the day, I really really wanted to kill him, and um. She mean really, really, <laughs> not, not really. Like literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, warm food. So that that just shows that when the universe decided to bring us together, it was like a runaway freight train. It was getting ready to have a head-on collision, and we couldn't stop it, no matter what we done. But we are sitting from a place what six and a half years in now. Yeah. And looking back on it and going, wow, we have changed so much since um, even that six to eight years ago in the reconnection. Um, we learned so much back in the day when we had children. We learned how the reactionary works. And mm -hmm. now we're learning we need to be at home with each other and allow, which here's the way I look at this. Relationship means I want to make this relationship work. So I'm willing to give up a few things so that everybody in the house is happy, right? Conditional. Conditional. Mm -hmm. But what connection means is I take you as you are and what appears to be good or bad, and I am with you every step of the way, express how you feel, and do not be afraid that I will ever walk away. That's not to say that we have not set down certain boundaries. Yeah, we do Because there boundaries. are boundaries that need to be set. I don't care whether you're in a connection or a relationship or whatever you want to call it. There are boundaries that need to be set but, you know, we have just come to find out that for us, it works much better that way. And, you know, we're, we're learning it. You know, we're just like everybody else. You know, we're learning it just right along with everyone else. I mean, some people are just going to get it quicker. Uh, some people, their paths aren't going to include it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be a totally different path. Everybody's path is unique. Uh, I I think it, uh, there we go. You're back. You, you kind of broke up for a second there, but yeah, it's, uh, I think with, okay. So somebody in the chat is saying, uh, I want a twin flame. Is, isn't this something sort of like, uh, you either came in as a twin flame or you didn't. It's not like, I mean, we can have a soulmate and several, like you said, but, uh, with the twin flame, you either have one or you don't. Is, am I understanding that right? All right. Let's take yeah. twin flame out of the equation and let's say you're perfect vibrational match. Okay. okay. Twin flame has this, this attachment to it that says it's romantic or it's got this or it's got that. But what if you could find somebody that is your perfect frequency match mm -hmm. and you grow mm -hmm. together, expand together, contract together. I think, um, the twin flame dynamic, um, I'll put it in a different word. We call them power couples because two heads are better than one. Mm -hmm. Two souls coming together and working in this frequency and maneuvering through and becoming these infinite beings that you're supposed to be to begin with. Um, well, but, but it sounds like with you two, it's like, and because I've heard that, you know, twin flames decide before incarnating that they're going to, somehow meet up and you know yeah, work out their differences and with you guys it seems like you met each other and you know you were meant to be you split up and came back together and it seems like that's sort of how it works but do you agree with that or no well yeah and you know you have to understand too and i and and we feel that um sometimes you know if you do have a twin they don't always incarnate with you in this particular lifetime mm -hmm. 
So if they don't always do that. If you're That's busy, it. it's like the double split experiment. We'll go back to that. Okay. <laughs> now we're gonna we're gonna turn away and we're gonna look a different direction and allow the universe to bring in the infinite possibilities. If you turn and look away then that perfect vibrational match comes to you. But if you were out there and you're looking for your twin mm -hmm. flame and you are missing the other possibilities that could be there if you focus on loving yourself, mm -hmm. because the loving yourself will bring that vibratory match to you. So, um, Twin flames, we know that we've had lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. The bizarre thing is not only have we had lifetime after lifetime, but we've had our twins lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Wow. That's amazing. So we know at this time that it was that we basically um, went through this early on, had our children moved forward and came back together without the knowledge of twin flames. And so if we get caught up in the twin flame and we go into too many groups and we're getting so much information and being overwhelmed, we get caught up in that, in that cycle of energy and become attached to certain things. So if we look at attachment as something that brings you fear or it brings you anger or puts you in a space that you really don't want to be in. If you can shift that energy over and bring awareness, it brings peace. So what I would say, if someone is out there and they want their perfect vibratory match to come to them, look away, allow the universe to bring the path of least resistance to you. Because who's to say your vibratory match isn't your soulmate that's aligning you to meet with your twin flame. Our, our past relationships were preparing us for what was about to unfold. Alan had one that was very dominating, one that was very docile. And I am a happy, happy medium. Mm -hmm. I Very dominating or very docile. And the same thing applied with me. I needed someone um, that was kind of that balance. It's really funny because I remember the very first thing that came up was Alan and I wanted Subway sandwiches. Nobody thinks of this, okay? Subway sandwiches. I've ordered Subway sandwiches the same way for 22 years for my soulmate, thinking, oh, wow, now I got to learn a new way of ordering the Subway <laughs> sandwich. So mm -hmm. I asked so what is it that you want? It was identical. Identical. <laughs> I didn't have to relearn it because my soulmate had it drilled in me for 22 years and Alan ate the same thing. That's amazing. <laughs> you can't make this up, you know? Yeah. No, no, you can't. So we, we would just kind of basically say, though, be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Because we, we think that the twin flame moniker has been a little over romanticized mm -hmm. you know it's, it's not what you think it is it, it's no harlequin you know book cover with fabio before he started believing i can't believe it's not butter commercials yeah you but know, your it, hair looks like fabio well yeah it's getting yeah. there yeah i mean <laughs> but, yeah. but you know be careful what you ask for that's all i'll say about that because it's not quite what you think it is it you know, some people may make it, you know, sound like, oh, it's just wonderful. And, you know, you're living a, a heaven on earth. You're in a panacea utopia, you know, and all that. It ain't that. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of fear. There, there's a lot of everything that goes into it. There are great moments. Absolutely. Oh. There are fantastic moments. But don't think that it's just going to be, you know, hey, you paid your price at the at the, you know, at the front gate now you're going to get to ride all the rides for free it don't work that way <laughs> right well it's just i know a lot of people that i talk to uh you know especially in this uh, this mandela effect community where their spouse just doesn't see it happening and they just think we're crazy or, or whatever and uh or you know if they're lucky they're like me and they have someone that just deals with it sees it but sort of brushes it off as not being all that big of a deal and um 
And then when I look at my own personal relationship, I can look back and see how everything's worked out perfectly for me and my wife to be together, but I don't consider us a vibrational match. It's, but I can see why she's been there with me for what, 24? I hope she didn't watch this because I can't. 24 years, I think. Yeah, 24 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like you, Alan. I can't remember the exact year. I can do the math, but on the fly, you know, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just a fun. lot of times if you um, will look at what's going on around you, Shane, and look into the eyes of your wife and say, I am so grateful for you. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful for you and and offer her a dance like Ellen and I will start dancing um, when certain songs come on. And it opens up that heart and you look into the eyes of the person that you're with and really learn that love is there and they can be that vibratory match simply by changing those two things saying, mm -hmm. I honor you. And this is one thing that's really important that people understand. We say not stay. Okay. And a lot of people say, well, namaste has this meaning. This is what namaste means to us. Shane, mm -hmm. I honor the master in you as you honor the master in me. Mm -hmm. Namaste is simply honoring that every human being walking in it is a master, not a student. They are a master. They are just maneuvering through and they need hella cheerleaders. And that's what Alan and I are, hella cheerleaders. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's and, and like like I say, I, you'll hear me all the time say, "Oh, this is exactly how it's meant to be." I can look back, but she might not feel that way, you know. <laughs> oh gosh, what did I get myself into? Twenty four years of this or whatever. But you know, really, I, I see how we were meant for each other, and I love her to death. I know she loves me to death, but you know, uh, we just don't see the eye to eye on a lot of things, and you know. But I, I feel like that's just part of it. You know what I mean? It kind of it's like you know, sharpening the knife and the, uh, you know, iron sharpens iron yeah. or whatever the, the saying is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You are, you're just doing an amazing yeah. job and we are those cheerleaders that want to get out there and say, you know what? Not everybody that's out there teaching and are these huge people. Um, a lot of them have it pretty easy right now. It's the ones that are starting up and going, I know there's a reason I'm doing this. I just haven't figured it out yet. Right. And we like to find those people that say, look, I'm stepping into my passion. There are a few people um, that have really assisted us on our journey. If we hadn't had them, we would have been, oh, losing it. So we honor them by having them on the show. Um, so when you your session, it's all about your mission, not everybody else's and how they do it, but how you do it. Mm -hmm. And your people love you. We love you. Rock. You've got a fantastic group of supporters. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, and I love them to death, man. I love you guys <laughs> to death. And the moment I met you guys, I was like, wow, that's, I know we've known each other before now. I just can't remember, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There's just that connection there. It's like, I put my finger on it, you know, but I can't, you know, I just got to wait and see. <laughs> you just know, you just know, and that's all you need to know. Well, I do want to tell everybody about your show, which is it comes on live Sundays. I do have the link below with the times. Uh, it's 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. if you're Pacific time, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. if you're Eastern. Of course, for me, it's 12 to 2 here in Central Time. And if you're on the other side of the pond, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. UTC or GMT. And you can do the math from there. And I do have the links below as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we've got some well, thank new, you. we've got some new things coming down the road too. Yeah, so, yeah. um, it's, we're teaming up with some other twin flames that have said, okay, let's go unity here. We got to kick this into high gear, start working together. And it really assists people on this journey and be those cheerleaders that say, go, go, go team, go, go, go. Um, so a lot of things that are opening up and we hope that you, 
that your people will get in contact with us and let us know how they feel about um, the discussions that we've had and if there's anything they'd like to hear us talk about on our radio show. Definitely. Yeah, and what's cool about your show is you have a call-in show so that they can actually call in live and yeah. ask uh, directly right there on the show. That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Now, when we are you guys a- going to Ecuador? Is that a Twin Flame retreat sort of thing you're doing? or? Actually, we're teaming up with another set of Twin Flames, and they have a retreat in Ecuador. Oh, that and sounds nice. So, um, in the Andes. Yeah, in the Andes. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, this, we're led every step of the way. We don't make sense. We are just guided. Have faith and go there. Um, and everything will just unfold before you. And so we we walk on complete faith. Yeah, I mean, there, if, if we had to go right now, we couldn't go. There's no way. But we know that when the time is right, mm-hmm. that it's going to come around and then it's going to be go time. So, I mean, and, and that's taken some, I don't want to say training, but you know, basically that's taken some getting used to on our part too, just allowing, you know, and not trying to force it, you know, saying, well, it's got to be by this time. It's going to be here. We got to do this to get there. We do what we can with what we have. And when the time's right, we know it's right. And then it happens. Yeah. It's wonderful. Living by faith. Are you guys going to do your show live from, from there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're not quite how that's all going to, you know, uh, coincide yet, but yeah, as of right now, that's kind of what our plan is and it may change by then. We don't know. So we're there again. We're just kind of going with it. And what? we will let everybody know we will be having a second show on TFR starting in July. Oh, sweet. I think it'd be cool if you guys can check in from down there. Uh, come on the show, maybe. And, and oh, you can. I don't know where the internet is, but that would be neat. Yeah, and, and we know that there are some other topics that you wanted to hit on today that I don't think we quite really got to, but, I mean, we're more than happy to, you know, talk about that. Awesome. Yeah, and then plus you have so, your group yeah. that people can go to. Well, we have time now, and if you guys – are you guys needing to go, or you got a few minutes? Oh, no, we're good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, yeah, Um, I'm still good. We do want to let you guys know, everybody that's in the chat room, okay? Alan and I are not really out there talking about doing healings and stuff like that. So this is what I'm going to tell your listening audience. And I know it's not so huge that it becomes overwhelming for us. If people would like to experience that, then they can email email us and say we would like to experience that and um the procedure that we went through with you shane Mm -hmm. if your audience wants to experience it they can do it for 25 dollars. really yes very nice so we're opening that up for you guys so if you'd like to try it you can you you guys make a great team when it comes to that it's amazing i can definitely see the whole one flame thing at work when you guys are (laughs) together it's wonderful a lot of people start when we go into a session with them they just Mm -hmm. start bawling they're like i don't know why i'm crying and it's like it's okay it's okay to this and um there are a lot of things that can actually break the glass ceiling when we reach that point where we're saying okay i know there's more but i just don't quite know how to break that glass ceiling and um, something like this could be the thing that, that you're waiting for. Um, and like we told you, Shane, when somebody has that done, they have a 72 hour window where they can hold that energy and really break the glass ceiling, or they can go, Oh, I don't know. You know, and it, mm-hmm. and it goes back to the old, but most people shift into, um, breaking the glass ceiling and, taking some leaps forward um and it really becomes this amazing process to watch it unfold yeah and i think i I probably i've had a few epiphanies where i just was overwhelmed with emotion and cried like that and i think probably i might have already broken that you know before (laughs) we got together so whatever that is (laughs) because i've had i've had some pretty strange moments of you know where i just 
I felt overwhelming love and uh, just, I don't know, I have a knowing that there's more going on than uh, what we see. And I think if someone hasn't fully experienced that and they experience that when they're with you, I can definitely see them breaking down and crying because I definitely yeah. felt the energy. But I, I think I'm sort of already wide open when it comes to love and all that stuff. I've, I've already had those moments, I think. <laughs> but they still continue to yeah, come, right. you know. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. We yeah. think it's funny to um, sessions with people and they go, oh, my God, look at that. Look at that. They have funny moments when some of the pictures we sent you, those were Skype sessions with people. And they were like, oh, my God. And they take pictures and send them to us. We don't take those pictures. No. They do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And so it just becomes this thing where what you need to see, you will see. And we just kind of go with it and say, okay, here we go again. Um, we've had the, um, the cabin actually change, almost change. Um, it becomes really wavy, like it's a vortex. Um, and my spiritual name is Singularity Peace and Ellen's is the guide. Mm -hmm. And so um, we know that there is a huge mission ahead of us, but we can see kind of like time warps in this little space. And people are like, how did your refrigerator just get taller than you when it was shorter? Right. You know, or the door just looks like it went nine feet tall. Yeah, yeah, it elongates. Um, I've or, had those ripples like that just to, just for a moment though, where it just like my vision ripples, like what you're saying, like it's, it was all an illusion and I got to see sort of a time warp effect. Yeah. yeah. Sort yeah, of like dizziness, people, but it's not in your head, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have people <laughs> taking screenshots and going, look what I seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> or no light shining outside and the windows are open and the entire cabin just floods with the most amazing white light and just wipes everything out. Right. And that's some of the pictures you've seen yeah. is being whited out. And um, it's, it's, I just can't explain how it feels to walk in complete faith and know that we're, we're on the path. We're doing what we're supposed to, and we're seeking out people like you and some of the people in your chat room that are doing their thing and saying, okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. um, in the courage, your voice says, speak your truth no matter what it sounds like no matter what it, people say um your family can say oh my god you've lost your mind but eventually they're going to come and go i want what you've got i want that mm -hmm. energy that you're putting out i want that love that you you give to everyone and they'll come to you and say how do you do it with shane how do you do it michelle or how do you do it sylvia or how do you do it? What's the other lady's name? Deborah? The one called in. Uh, oh, yeah, Michelle Deborah. called in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Michelle's <laughs> opinions. Yeah. You got you got a yeah. lot of Michelles. I can't keep track of them all. Yeah, a lot of Michelles, a lot of Debras. Uh, uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, oh, it's, oh, Diane. I have a few Dianes, and uh, yeah, there's. It's funny how they're lumped into names like that. It's amazing. <laughs> But I mean, there's there's so much um, that the universe is giving us. Are we are we going to open up our not our 3D eyes, but our eyes and really see? Um, yeah. This is an amazing time to be here on this planet Earth and watch everything unfold. It really is, yeah. Yeah, I know that there are a lot of people experiencing headaches. I happen to be one of them. These frequencies coming in are they are just really intense which brings um, me to what somebody was saying in the chat about sexual energy which is why i wanted to bring it up with you two because yeah. you're a couple so it's more appropriate than what some of my other guests but uh <laughs> yeah, they're asking about sexual energy has anybody noticed that change now i've seen a few spiritual channels where they say you know refrain from you know using up your sexual energy your life force energy others say you know make sure you're a match uh, so what's what's the story with with that? What do you have to offer to the whole mystery? I mean, you okay, got well, heard we, about this, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we can tell you that um, 
look at it from a different perspective than sexual energy. We're going to look at it from Alan and I are what, what is um, called sacred union couple. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they are capable of coming together and in sexual union, which is coming together sexual, um, they transmute and clear um, previous timelines or lifetimes. Um, a lot of the um, residual energy that carries over into this body. So the energy is capable of clearing anything out. But before you clear it out, you have to um, bring awareness to it. Okay, well, I see this is coming up. And then the energy clears it. Not only that, but it it's... Um, if couples are in sacred union, you will be able to tell. Um, they, <laughs> Alan and I are together 27 days a week. How many people can say, I'm with my spouse 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I don't want to kill them? Right, rip their head off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you can't agree on everything all the time. And Alan and I don't agree on everything all the time. But, we give each other the space to address and then we bring it to the table in discussion. Your sexual energy is the most intense, most God-given energy any human being has. So it can manifest anything in your life. It can transmute any trauma in your life. It can it can shift you in ways that you can't even imagine. But the sexual energy is, to a lot of people, feels like sexual attraction. When your sexual energy hits its peak, you're like, what the heck is going on? This is you being in that perfect oscillation that creates the vibration that puts the frequency out. Okay? Mm -hmm. So oscillation begins the spin of the chakras. Okay, the vibration then rises and the heart chakra, which should now be the base chakra for everyone or soon to be, puts the, the frequency out. You bring like frequency to you through the frequency you put out. This is your sexual energy. And Tantra teaches that men... Um, should refrain well, from well, and there's a number of different yeah. different way avenues as far as the tantric goes that we've seen mm -hmm. uh, and and you've even heard it in the bible where it says that a man should cleave to his wife mm -hmm. okay when he leaves his parents it's good to have a wife it's good to have a partner um and there are some like um monks that choose to be of it. There are twin flame couples out there who are not together yet that are in separation and the women have gone on um, celibacy for some of them up to oh, years. years, six to eight years. years. And they're like, I just can't see myself being with anyone than my beloved. And they know. They believe it. And when they believe it, they will see it. Mm. So they walk and, and they care for themselves and what they need with love. And they use the sexual energy to shift them on the inside. When we get focused on someone else, we're pulling our self-love and our energy away and we're giving it away. Mm -hmm. So we say, your energy is yours. Be aware of what you're capable of. You go out and you have multiple sexual partners, you're giving your power to them, but also they're giving their power to you. So what kind of karma do you think is coming up? I see. Okay, so keep your energy clear um, and focus. That sexual energy is an intense, it's God to every human being. So treat it as divine That's so as awesome. far as using it for manifestation is there um any tips you have for that 
Okay. Well, Al, oh, I think everything that Alan and I have, have manifested in our life is because um, of the sexual energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whether it's we life are force energy, really. That's, that's your prana. Yeah. Yeah. That is um, what you put, you will get back. So um, if a thought enters my mind that says, hey, honey, we're going on an adventure. The universe gives you an adventure. If you say, huh, I would like to do this, but I don't know how it's possible. And you switch that around and say, I would like to do this. The universe is going to make it happen for me. Watch it happen. Right. So it gets into intention like we've been already discussing on our power of eight. Just directing your intention towards something and trusting it's going to happen. Because it's yes. you yeah. focusing that energy. And my passport is the perfect thing. We can all get a little distracted. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bring it back to self and go, okay, what was the universe showing me? The universe was showing me you're stepping outside of yourself and more concerned with what is going on with Alan when Alan was paying attention to Alan. Sandra was paying attention to Alan. So Alan got his passport. Now Sandra better bring it back to herself. Right. <laughs> and I said, okay, honey, your turn. And he goes, okay, I'm with you, babe. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> Maneuvering that it through the flow. If you're in the flow, you know, because everything just unfolds. You don't have to force anything. You don't have to do anything special. You just get in the flow and the universe brings it to you. And that's really hard for people to conceive. But I think synchronicities, when I, when I, I feel like synchronicities, like, especially if it's just the time on the clock or something, is like a signpost to let you know that's your, you're on, you know, you're on the right path or whatever. So when you're in the flow, you know, if you keep an eye out for those synchronistic things in life, you know, it's sort of a, it, it reassures you, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And we've, oh, yeah. we've kind of stepped at, we don't even have um, a clock in our little cabin. Right. The only it. And the only reason we really even look at that is just to make sure we don't miss like show our, appointments. Our show appointments. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> right. Otherwise, we're just like, we don't care. We don't use an alarm clock. The only alarm clock we have is on Sunday mornings, we set the coffee pot. And we're always up anyway. So so it's like we have to step out of what we know so well and start to learn something we don't know so well. And, and have the faith that it's going to take us where we need to go. But it's freeing and, at times, too. I mean, th doesn't it feel better to be off of the clock like that? Oh, oh my God, oh, yes. Oh. Yeah, it takes a lot of pressure off. You know, and, and we understand that there's a lot of people that have to be on the clock to a certain degree, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we understand that because we are in a 3D world, after all, you know, and there's certain, you know, things that you have to do and, and all that. But, you know, we've learned to become dependent on that. And, you know, it, it dictates us. It, it really does. I mean, it just dictates everybody. And, you know, to us, it's kind of like a control mechanism. It is. Yeah, I think it's, like it's really important. Mechanism. You wake up in the morning before you even put your feet on the ground. You just say, I am so grateful for this moment. And I am 52. So when I put my feet on the ground and said, I'm so grateful, it generally means I'm grateful that I'm sitting up in bed and I'm not. All right. Um, <laughs> so i mean there are many things to be grateful for and sometimes we just focus on the things we don't have more than we do the things we want yeah that's so true but so, yeah on the on the sexual thing we just kind of say you know you want to be careful about just throwing it around mm -hmm. you know we don't think you should just do that but outside of that you know, there, there's many different, you know, philosophies on that, as I'm sure that you probably come across. And we kind of believe that whatever you do is right mm -hmm. because it's for you. It's either going to be right for you to begin with, or if it's not right, then that's just going to kind of add to your power of discernment to let you know what doesn't work for you. And, you know, 
we're humans. We go through lessons a hard way. I mean, you know, that's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. Right. I mean, sex is meant to be fun, but at the same time, we have those moments where um, practicing um, Tantra and, and using the Ankh, for example, bringing that energy up through the heart and over to the back. And um, generally, the men hold that energy. The women manifest, okay? Mm -hmm. The men are the ones that come up with the ideas, Okay, so they would like this to happen in their life. And then when they when they are in sacred union with their beloved and and they have sexual intercourse, the woman is in this state of bliss and she will manifest that. So there's this this balancing um, beauty. It's the dance, the beautiful dance that the two can do together. Yeah, it's like the divine version of the physical. Like, you know, the guy's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's do this. And, yeah. and then mm -hmm. the woman manifests the baby. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> In Alan's case, two. Right. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah, a big idea. Right after, yeah. To which right after that happened, it said, okay, one of the two of us, probably me, is going to get fixed. Because if you're going to start spitting out litters, I'm done. I, I'm not going to start doing this. <laughs> so. This will show you exactly where Alan was 30 That's years ago. That's where I ago. was 30 years ago. Well, it's showing me, you know, how big of a manifester you are, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't into football. I'll put it that way. <laughs> football team. <laughs> That's no, wonderful. but I mean, there, I mean, if you want to check out. Um, um, so we hope that made sense a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You can ask us any questions, guys. You can send us an email to um, twinflamedivinefire at gmail.com and we will get back with you as soon as we can if you have questions. If you want to book something with us and you have more in-depth um, questions, you can do that too. We don't do a whole lot of sessions, but we do have them up on the website. Mm -hmm. We have some yeah. people that stay with us that have been with us for quite a while and they're like, um, it's very different from most. When you book like a um a qhhc yeah qhhc um when you book that i mean you know exactly that you're going under hypnotic a hypnotic state when you're doing other things you know exactly what you're getting into when you book a session with alan and i it's like um we're meeting a brother sister cousin for the first time and Shane, you know, we go into a discussion and it's like, hi, how are you? I see you. Right. And we just open up a line of communication and there's something about that that shifts everything. Mm -hmm. um, we don't go in and say, well, you're going to experience this or that. I mean, when we get ready to do attunements for people, we do go into a little bit more detail, but it's more about allowing us to hear your voice and you hear our voice and say, I know you. And, and I did feel comfortable and open with you guys too. That was wonderful. <laughs> Definitely felt my higher self saying, they're all right, go ahead. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and we, that's a huge compliment for, I mean, we, yeah. we appreciate that so much because that's our aim. That's what we want to do, you know, because, and, and you get it and your guests that you have and the, and the folks in your chat room, they get it. Everybody that listens to you, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be here to assist each other because we've had way too much of this us and them, uh, you know, the hierarchical crap that has been going on for centuries, thousands of years. That's all breaking down now and it's got to go. And, you know, we get it. We get that. And it's going to go. Or at the very least, we're going to do our best to, to make that happen. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Yeah. And we I don't like do it. it by converting people. We do it like you do, by example. You do it by example. You're not out to convert anybody. You're just like, hey, if you want some of what I have, I'm here. If you don't, I love you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's your journey. You do what you have to do. We all have to do what we have to do. Every good choice we make, every not so good choice we make is, are the choices that we have to, to follow through with for our soul growth. 
Once again, what was the uh, name of the Facebook group where you have more of these discussions? I don't think I caught that. Um, twin, it's we haven't been there in a little I while. Know, right? Okay, so I have the Facebook.com forward slash Twin Flame Divine Fire, but there was an mm -hmm. actual group too, right? Yes. Um, uh, twin. Fl okay, wait a minute. Divine, Divine sexuality, sexuality for Twin yeah. Flames. On Facebook. Is that a closed group? Yes. So okay. they'll send a request and then we take a look. We're, we scrutinize very carefully to make sure that we don't get people in there that are yeah, trying to pick up on people. We learned early on we don't let just anybody in there because they started treating it like, you know. Some, a dating site. Yeah, a dating site. Or, oh, right. Yeah. So it's a, so divine sexuality for what was twin the flames. Twin, twin flames. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've added that down to the description below, but it, it would probably be better. What if they send you an email and let you know they're coming sort of a thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That would probably be the best thing. That way, you know, it's just not somebody that stumbled across it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if they've listened to the whole two hours and 20 minutes, then they're probably not a troll just trying to pick up on oh. it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just looked up. <laughs> But I do appreciate you guys coming on. I'd love to have you back again. And like I said, when you take your trip to Ecuador, that would be so cool if you could check in, even if it's for a short time. That would be so awesome. Oh, you we got it. We would love to. You Absolutely. Anytime just chatting with you is a great day, Shane. I appreciate that, you guys. Um, I want to send lots of love and light to everybody in the chat room. And I guess we will call it, say peace and call it a day. All right. Sounds great. Well, Much love. we love you all, everybody in the chat room. Yes. Namaste. Yes, yes. Namaste. Yes. Namaste. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs>